Hello and welcome to UPSC Preparation Simplified, an initiative by Rao's IS Study Circle where we try to solve the problems that you as parents might be facing while preparing for the UPSC examination. Today, we are going to talk about the specific topic of science and technology and we have the best person to talk about that. That is Mr. Akshay Rath, sir, who teaches science and technology at Rao's IS. Sir, welcome on board. Thank you, sir. Sir, UPSC mains has been conducted yeah. and uh, GS Paper 3 in which science and technology is there. We could see good number of questions as well, uh, right. especially from those topics which you have taught as well. Yes. So, sir, what is the first impression about the paper and how uh, nice you feel when your questions are there in the paper as well? So, overall, I think the question paper was more or less predictable and simple. Mm -hmm. I think any student who has worked hard enough or with average average level of preparation also would have found the question easy to attempt. Mm -hmm. I always tell students that you know the questions are mostly interdisciplinary questions mostly have multifaceted aspects. Hmm. This question paper fits into that definition perfectly. Wonderful, sir. Now, sir, when I was looking at the yeah. questions, there were some questions which actually uh, made me feel a little bothered as well. Sir. Especially the question which talked about cellulose. Right, uh, so, right. when we talk about these questions, these questions yeah. appeal to be a little uh, interdisciplinary in nature as well. True, true, at the same time, uh, it is difficult to reflect mm. answers in 150 or 50 words. So, mm. how one should actually approach these questions? So, this question particularly was a surprise. I, I believe last year also we have had that blue LED question, yes, which yes. was also a surprise similar in a similar way. Uh, question on cellulose, I would believe that it is more or less related to general science and it partly comes comes fall under, mostly it falls under biology mm -hmm. and partly it can be considered under ecology and environment as well. Mm -hmm. But this question particularly because it relates with the idea of decomposition of cellulose, how natural decomposition of cellulose takes place. Mm -hmm. So, to put it in the in the in the framework of biology biotechnology i don't think that will justify the question okay it will fall under the framework of energy it mm. will fall under the framework of ecology natural mm. decomposition and biology at the same time mm -hmm. so a student who has a little bit of understanding of all the three things mm. and that he, they they may find this answer easy to write mm -hmm. So like this question says that cellulose which is produced across the surface it is it is a primary it's a complex uh, kind of a carbohydrate which mm -hmm. is produced by the primary producers plants mm -hmm. and most of the plants they are producing cellulose in some way or the other through photosynthesis so it's very obvious that every carbohydrate is made up of carbon hydrogen oxygen mm -hmm. so one can easily understand that carbohydrates which is the prime which is considered as the primary source or the quickest source of energy for like for biomass so they will also be carrying a lot of energy, mm -hmm. energy capacity of cellulose will always be very high. Mm -hmm. So when you consider cellulose and its natural decomposition process, we can see cellulose getting natural decomposed in multiple ways. Mm -hmm. We can see a natural bacterial decay of cellulose, mm -hmm. hydrolysis of cellulose, where hydrogen, where water breaks down the cellulose and with the help of bacteria and fungi. We see natural decomposition happening in the absence of air, anaerobic mm -hmm. decomposition. Of course. We can see natural decomposition done by some animals called ruminant cattle. Yes. They try to break yes. down complex cellulose. They are the only animals which can break down cellulose. So we see natural decomposition cellulose happening around us in multiple ways. But when we try to answer these kind of questions, these are the kind of things that any random student would have answered. But UPSC would obviously ask for a different approach. Uh, UPSC would obviously expect a little substantiation of the answers. Mm -hmm. So I believe that students can take a hint here and they can relate it with biofuels, they can relate it with the ongoing changes. Even the government of India, they are, they are promoting biofuels, Govardhan initiative and such things they can relate it with. So it is very much possible that you can relate cellulose with that of bioenergy, bioethanol, that we can break down the cellulose with the help of dark fermentation, with the help of artificial fermentation, yeast and such, uh, such fungal agents and we can break it into bioethanol mm -hmm. and then students can relate it with the possibilities of flexible fuel we can relate it with the possibilities of like quite recently india's overall ethanol production has reached around yes. 9, 923 crores of uh, crore liters every year now so it is showing that the government of india is also concentrating on it and there is a very good aspect of consuming this bio waste into an energy source before getting it degraded directly into a directly into humus so this makes a very simple idea about that how cellulose can be tackled and how this question on cellulose can be tackled particularly. Sir, we were, when we were talking off camera, yeah. you were also talking about the cycles, uh, various true, nutrient true, cycle true, can also yes. be highlighted in this entire exactly. process. Exactly, because this question demands almost 250 words. So in that case, when yeah. you're addressing a question like this, it is obviously, it is obviously better that a student is expected to write multifaceted aspects. Mm -hmm. So if you want to relate it with ecology, you can definitely mention the nutrient, the biogeochemical cycles that we mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. or the, you know, the nutrient cycles that we see where cellulose 
being a part of being majorly made up of carbon it can be part of carbon cycle you can mention those kind of comments also in the answer you can also relate it with uh, with the production uh, with the primary production capacity of a plant mm -hmm. that how the cellulose production capacity or productivity of a plant will vary from different ecosystem you can of mention course. those points also mm. so those are the things that will enrich the overall answer of a student but ultimately we mm. have to write everything within 250 words yes, so we have to use out of caution as well yes. i guess so i i believe that students should emphasize more on the keywords mm. if they have done a thorough study of the things then they should keep the keywords in mind and these keywords they help the student or help the answer to to look to appear that the student has done really good hard work in in preparing for civil service exams hmm. so using keywords like nutrient cycle biogeochemical cycle using keywords like energy economics carbon neutrality these are the words that enrich the overall quality of the answer yes that's again hmm. actually it is not hmm. only important to write good answers but also answers hmm. which appeal to the examiner exactly, well. sir, exactly. wonderful True, sir. now moving to one more question which hmm. for which i want to ask more is james webb telescope exactly. so uh, sir when i saw this question hmm. i felt this question was very factual in nature True. so uh, first and foremost uh, let me uh, help me understand rather hmm. uh, why this question was asked what was the purpose of upsc in asking this question so it's true that this question is will prima facie it will always appear to be very factual because whatever things we write in the notes they upsc have simply given all those things in the question itself mm -hmm. like why what is the objective of the mission what, how it can help the human race and such thing so the question is definitely factually nature we have to so if i talk about why this question has been asked so i believe that this has been a very landmark achievement by uh, although it is a joint venture between nasa and european space agency mm. but i believe it's a very landmark achievement by all the all the space scientists because for the first time a need this kind of a telescope this nature of this massive telescopes have been put up in space hmm. it has already been delayed for almost 15 years because yes. it was supposed to be launched in 2007 first and it has been delayed uh, in 2021 only we were able to launch it so it shows that there is a lot of hard work has been put into build, building such a telescope of this nature and why it was very essential because the bigger the telescope the farther we can see simple mm -hmm. object uh, simple ideas here so this tell this a uh, nature of this kind of telescope has never been built before mm -hmm. there is something called aperture which is helping the telescope to capture light from mm -hmm. the farthest points mm -hmm. it is having the longest aperture the biggest aperture so far wow. around 6.5 meters mm -hmm. and uh, the previously before this james webb space telescope the predecessors of these telescope were the great observatories program mm -hmm. where mostly um, hubble space telescope and spitzer are considered to be direct uh, predecessor to this because technically james webb space telescope is a primarily infrared telescope it normally looks at the looks at the light which is of the lower energy spectrum infrared okay. rays and when it comes to hubble space telescope and spitzer they both were of the same compatibility visible light and infrared okay so that makes james webb a direct successor to these two telescopes okay okay and on top of that when you talk about its objectives because it's the biggest telescope ever it can see very far in very far distance and when you look and consider the idea of astronomical distances we use the unit light years for that hmm. and light year is simply not just we are looking looking far in the universe but you are also looking that much back in time hmm. so if something is one light year far it is also giving us the information that how the universe would have appeared one year ago one year ago hmm. so the biggest that bigger the telescope we built farther back in time we can see hmm. so james webb space telescope it is believed that it can see the universe right after 100 million years of big bang right when the dark ages ended hmm. and the first visible light in the universe would have originated mm -hmm. so the recent images captured by james webb space, space telescope it also showcases the same ideas mm -hmm. that it is able to capture those images which were released from the satellites which were released from the galaxies almost 100 or 200 million years right after mm -hmm. the big bang mm -hmm. so that holds the very important key to understand how this universe was created how this universe came into existence or whether we can how far we can verify things like big bang cosmic inflation theory and such things so this question i i believe that this question can be addressed from many point of view in fact the last point in the question it says that how does it impact yes. or influence the human race human race hmm. so that is something which is big, which becomes a very subjective part mm -hmm. if i if i would want to write down things on human race then there are a lot of things that james webb space telescope can help us answer like mm -hmm. it can help us to identify how galaxies are formed mm -hmm. so how our milky way must have been formed we can answer we can find those answer it can help us to identify how the stellar nebulas eventually convert into an actual star and how the actual star eventually gives birth to a planetary system mm -hmm. so we can understand how our planetary system must have been formed then we can see some very difficult objects which are rather very difficult to see like black holes we can see the accretion disk around the black hole we can may, we may be able to observe quasars which are the brightest objects in the universe so these are the things which have always fascinated hum humans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so human race 
because this is this is this is something which i think every person would have thought at at randomly because the moment when you sit under the sun under the night sky you you get that feeling of transcendence that how small we are and how yes, big yes. this universe is mm. so the questions that it can answer are are limitless i would say mm-hmm. and lastly space always fascinates everyone mm-hmm. there are always so many events that keeps happening which we have never realized before which we have, so space is always full of surprises mm-hmm. so james webb space telescope will be open to lot of surprises in future i believe and i think we have mm-hmm. uh, seen lot of talks about space tourism and we also exactly. talked about colonization of mars as yes, well true, true, uh, elon musk has true. highlighted this point jeff yes. bezos has connected a, yes. a space tourism as well yes, so when we look at this aspect it seems that space is the next big thing Yes, sir, and sense. and I I this is my very honest suggestion that students should not be ignoring space. Mm-hmm. I I believe that it should be treated as a next big sector itself, and all the dimension of space can be asked in UPSC now. Mm-hmm. If James Webb Space Telescope can be asked, then the next big thing could be space tourism. It, they can relate space tourism with economics. They can relate space tourism of with course. with biology, mm-hmm. with the effect of life forms. Mm-hmm. So there is a possibility of space colonization. These kind of thing. Space colonization can be related with international relations. Yes. So paper three itself is a very dynamic paper, and there is a lot of aspect that IR, economics, science, they all will intertwine together eventually, sir. So this brings me to the third important question of sir. our discussion. And whenever we look at any topic in mm-hmm. UPSC mains, we say that the topic is interdisciplinary in nature. True, sir. And uh, we have also seen the similar aspect in the science and technology topic mm-hmm. as well. So to what extent uh, this particular topic was interdisciplinary, according to you? Sir, this entire paper, I believe, is a perfect example of interdisciplinary approach. Mm-hmm. Like we have been telling students all the time that write in multiple dimensions, mm-hmm. cover, try to cover more dimensions. This question becomes a very good example. This question paper itself becomes a very good example of how to cover multiple dimensions. Mm-hmm. Like I was particularly impressed, like off camera when we were talking, we 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 were talking about that how this question of climate change approach was asked from the IR perspective. Yes, yes. So that is obviously one way. Then one question that fascinates me is about the subsidies shifting from fossil fuels to renewable energy. <laughs> yes, yes. Now this is one area where energy technology I normally covered about the technical aspect, but we all know that energy itself is an economic sector always. so this question paper covers all the dimensions that we have been talking to the students all the time we have been telling students that how massively how widely we should take up the approach of civil service exams mm. and i was particularly intrigued by this question on uh, you know the the possibilities that how far india can achieve its zero carbon or this its panchamrit commitment by 2050 yeah. Yeah. and the global commitment that we have in 20 by 2030 so i personally believe that upsc is exploring this domain and particularly from the area of environment ecology and in that they are trying to connect it with eco- economics at time they try to connect it with science and tech at the same time and also with international relations now mm-hmm. so i believe that this particular question paper gives a very good angle of creativity to a student if they have read all the subjects then they can very creatively write an answer and this is where the students have to be very cautious next time that mm-hmm. they ha- they cannot ignore these dimensions now mm-hmm. so even when you are reading james webb they can be a possibility that they can relate if something significant happens eventually they can relate james webb with possibilities of international relations space colonization great so that is obviously a possibility i believe so interdisciplinary approach is always the key i believe in civil service and this is a very good example for it sir i think uh, the mm-hmm. valuable inputs that you have shared must have actually excited a uh, lot of lot of students to actually prepare better for next mm-hmm. year and uh, i think mm-hmm. uh, once we put the knowledge of these papers in sir. terms of what upsc is asking then uh, students get a lot of direction and flow in terms exactly. of what to expect in future as well sir. and this paper actually reflects this approach very well exactly. isn't it sir true sir exactly uh, this shows that where the government is uh, where the world is thinking now mm-hmm. see upsc i i always say this in the class it is always the mirror of the future right mm-hmm. and paper 3 itself is a very good example that <laughs> where the future lies so this is a very good example that upsc has acknowledged this thing that you know environment is the next important sector it should be treated as an important part and every other discipline intertwines with environment now and this question paper shows that science is not exclusive anymore ecology is not exclusive anymore mm-hmm. without the right policy without the right market support technology can never bring a difference of course so this question shows that how intertwined the things are and we should ex- we should keep expecting similar type of question papers in future as well because as more and more of these challenges keeps coming and as more and more, more and more innovations keeps happening the world will eventually turn out to be a small place i would say great sir great thank you for sharing all this knowledge with us and think thank students you. will be greatly benefited by this and uh, i know that you have done exceptional hard work in creating great quality content i thank hope you. that all the students of ours will score top ranks and thank then you. definitely we will again sh- <laughs> celebrate Hopefully, their success sir. true thank you so much thank you sir so this was akshay sir who is uh, sharing his knowledge about the 
paper of paper gs paper 3 especially from the perspective of science and technology we will be bringing more such sessions for a similar topic so that we complete the entire knowledge for science and technology for this what you have to do you have to like our videos you have to share our videos you have to comment our videos and you also have to subscribe to our channel so from the entire team of rouse is we wish you all the best see you next time